Hello everyone. Today, let's look at the first chapter in accounting, accounting in action. So when we talk about accounting, what does it mean by accounting? What is accounting? So we say that accounting is the language of business. Accounting is the language of business. Now, when does accounting appear? When did accounting appear? 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, or six or 7,000 years ago? Um, accounting was first appear about um, six or 7,000 years ago in Assyria, Babylon, you know, and uh, about 4,000 years before Christ, uh, we found a token. Token was made of clay. Did you see that? It's made of clay. And token seems to have been used as the evidence of transaction. People use tokens to make the figure of cow or sheep when they exchange them to each other. About 1,000 years later, uh, people use the account tablet. And this account tablet is summarized the inventory and the transaction that have been made. There were not a lot of development until the 15th century when there was an appearance of someone who was called the father of accounting. Who was the father of accounting? His name is Luca Pacioli. He was born in 1447 uh, and uh, he was an Italian mathematician. He was a friend of Leonardo da de, de Vinci and in 1494, he published one of the famous book. It's called Everything About Arithmetic, Geometry, and Proportion. And he developed a double entry bookkeeping, which, you know, uh, that we know about accounting cycle today. And he described the use of uh, journal, lecture, and he also warned that a person should not go to sleep until debit equal credit. Now, accounting consists of three activities, identification, recording, and communication. Okay, in identification, there will be a lot of economic events. You know, in every business, we have a lot of transactions. So, the job of the accountant is that they have to identify which one is the economic event that they need to record. And then we have a second activity. It's called record, recording, or it also has a name called bookkeeping. In recording, we're going to record the transaction transaction we have to classify what type of transaction is that and then we have to summarize and the last activity is communication so in communication we prepare accounting record reports um, and then we analyze and interpret uh, the report to the for the users so uh, after we preparing the report, we need to communicate uh, the meaning of the report to the user. Okay, now, so who uses the accounting information? We have two groups of user here. One is called internal users and another is called external user. So internal users means the people who are in your company. So it includes the finance office, the marketing managers, human resources manager, or the management, 
they need accounting information so that they can make decisions. For example, the finance office will make decision whether they have enough money to pay the dividend to the shareholders or not. The marketing manager will need the accounting data so they can make decision what price they should charge for a product uh, to maximize the income. And human resources manager, they want to know uh, should they increase the salary of the employee this year or not based on the accounting information. And managers also want to know what kind of product is the most profitable in the company and what kind of product uh, does not bring any product profit and it should be eliminated. And the second group of user we call external users. So external user are those who are outside of your company. It includes the investor, the creditors, the government, uh, the internal serv uh, revenue service. So for example, uh, for the investor, they want to know whether your company is profitable or not so that they can invest the money in your company uh, by looking at the financial statements. And the creditors, the creditors are those who lend the money to the company. So they want to know, will this company be able to pay back the debt and the interest when it's due or not? So we call it creditors. Now, um, it's just like the architecture. When you build a house, you need to follow some standards. And so as the accountant, when you prepare the financial report, you also need to follow the standards and um, avoid the financial scandals. So effective financial reporting is depending on the ethical behavior. Now, there are two organizations that set the accounting standard. We have the Financial Accounting Standard Board. This organization uh, is from US and it set the general accepted accounting principle. We also call it as GAP. Okay, GAP is mean generally accepted accounting principles. So uh, GAP are those accounting principle that from the US and we have another one called International Accounting Standard Board. Now this organization will set the international uh, financial reporting standards which is used um, in many countries okay internationally. Now let's look at the measurement principles. So in accounting, uh, in chapter one, we're going to learn two basic principles. This is called a uh, historical cost principle. So in historical cost principle, we will record assets at their cost, or we call it cost principle, okay? So again, historical cost principle say, we need to record assets at their cost, all right? Now, let me give you some example. So for example, if I went to market, um, let's say on August 10, okay? Company A purchase um, a table in Moflag for um, five one hundred dollars, for example. Okay, and on August eleven. 
the price of the table increase to mm, let's say one hundred and ten dollars all right so the question in here is um, how much should company A record? The cost of the table. All right. Again, one more time. On August 10, company A purchased a table in Mooklet for $100. On August 11, the price of the table increases to $110. So how much should company record the cost of the table? 100 or 110? The answer is, according to the historical cost principle, right? The company should record the assets at cost. So in this example, company A should record um, the table as $100. Okay, as $100. All right, and we have uh, another exam another principle cost is the fair value principle. So in fair value principle, it say assets and liability should be reported at fair value. Fair value is mean the price received to sell an asset or to settle a liability. So um, this principle normally apply for the securities. Securities is mean the bond or the stock. Okay, so when we purchase or sell the bond or stock, we should report it at the market price, the fair value. Now, uh, in chapter one, we also will look at the two assumptions in accounting. One is called monetary unit assumptions, and another is called economic entity assumption. So in monetary unit assumption, it say, uh, the company should only record the transactions that can be expressed in terms of money. All right, so if there's any transaction that cannot be expressed in terms of money, we will not record that, all right? For example, let's say today company A hire a secretary and sign a contract with the secretary. Company A promised to pay the secretary $500 per month. Okay, should we record this transaction or not? The answer will be no. Why? Because today we just hired a secretary, we signed a contract, we promised to pay her $500 per month, but we haven't paid any money to her yet, okay? And she has not worked for us yet. So in this uh, transaction, it cannot be expressed in terms of money, so we will not record it. The next assumption is the economic entity assumption. So the economic entity assumptions say activity of an entity should be kept separate from the activity of its owners, okay? The activity of the business should be kept separated from the activity of the owner. For example, for example, um, let me give you the example here. Okay, for example, Chu Long is the owner of Trust Collecting Company. Now, on August 11, Chu Long goes to the market and purchase food, clothes, and shoes, all cost 3,000 baht. Uh, should Chu Long record this transaction in the Trust Collecting Company? Yes or no? The answer is no, okay, because this is a personal transaction, okay. This is an activity of the owner, 
And according to the uh, entity, uh, economic entity assumption is say, the activity of the owner should be kept separated from the activity of the company. Now, if too long represent the company, purchase a car for the company, and this car will be used for the company. Okay, so in this case, um, it has to be recorded in the company. All right, but just remember for me, uh, economic entity assumptions say the activity of the owner should be kept separated from the activity of the company. All right. So any personal activities uh, should be separated and should not be recorded in the company. Now, there are two types of business ownerships. One is called proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. So proprietorship is means uh, the business that is owned by one person. For example, if I open a bookstore, I'm the only one owner, so this will be called proprietorship, okay? Now, if my friend and me, we open, uh, let's say, a hair salon, then this will be called a partnership. Partnership is mean the business that is owned by two or more people. And the last type, we call it corporation. Corporation is owned by many people, okay? Normally, the corporation will sell stock okay, to the stock market. So whoever purchased the stock of the company will become the owner of the company, all right? Now, let's look closer on the difference between um, the type of business ownership. So we have proprietorship, partnership, and corporation, okay? Now remember, proprietorship is owned by only one person. So if the company generate profit or loss, um, the the owner will receive the the profit. And if it has a loss, then the owner will suffer from the loss. And the owner will also be personally responsible for all the debts. It means that if the proprietorship goes bankrupt. If, if the company goes bankrupt, then the owner, he has to sell his own assets, his own property to pay for the debt of the company. Okay? Now next we have partnership. Partnership is owned by two or more people. You remember that? Okay, for example, a clinic, a restaurant, you know, if it is owned by uh, two or more people. Uh, normally, it also have unlimited uh, personal liability. So it's similar with the proprietorship. It's similar with the proprietorship. Uh, so if uh, the company go bankrupt, okay, the owner, the owner will also responsible for the debt of the company. And in the partnership, there will be a partnership agreement. So there will be agreement between the two partners. For example, we will share the profit 50 and 50% or 40 and 60%. It depends on the partner agreement. Now in corporation, the ownership divided into shares, which means that corporation, they will sell the shares to the shareholder. So the shareholder will purchase the share from the corporation and they will become the owner of the corporation, okay? And for corporation, they have limited liabilities. Limited liability is mean that they are responsible to pay back the debt up to the amount of the investment that they make in the company only. They don't have to sell their own house, their car to pay for the debt of the company if the company go bankrupt.
Okay. Now let's look at the accounting equations. So the accounting equations say SS equal to liabilities plus owner equity. SS equal to liabilities plus owner equity. Okay. Now let's look at assets. Assets mean the resources from the business. The resources from the business. So, um, what kind of resources from the business do we have? It includes. Let me show you. It includes cash, account receivable, supply, inventory, equipment, machinery, building, and land. All right. Now, what does it mean by cash? Cash. It means the money. Uh, the money, okay, we call it cash. A care receivable. What is a care receivable? Okay, let me give you an example. Now, company A sell two thousand dollars of computer to company B. Okay. Now, company B say, um, we don't have money right now, so company B promise. Company A that uh, it will pay company A in 20 days. Okay, so it means that company A already sell the computer to company B, but it doesn't receive the money yet. It's going to receive the money two thousand dollars in the future. Okay, so we call it as a care receivable. Okay, we call it as a care receivable. So what is a care receivable? A care receivable is mean the amount of money that um, company A is going to receive in the future. We call it a care receivable. Now next is supplies. Supplies are those stationary, those things that we use in business. For example, uh, you use a uh, notebook, pencil, pens. Scissor, glue, something like that, we call it supplies. Inventory. Inventories are the things that you purchase from the supplier and then you put it in your warehouse and then put you put on the shelves and then you sell it to the customers. So we call it an inventory. Okay? Remember, inventory and supplies, they are different. Inventory are those things that we purchase and then we sell it to the customer. But supplies are those we purchase and we use in running our business. Next, we have equipment. Equipment is, for example, like um, a computer, okay, a computers, or some equipment that we use in a business, machinery. Okay, a photocopy machine or in some factory we have machine, then that will be our assets. Then we have building, land, and uh, so on. Okay, they are called assets. They are called assets. Next, we have liability. So liability is mean debt. Okay, debt. It's the amount that we owe to someone. Okay, we owe to someone. So let's look at this case again. You remember, company A sells uh, uh, the computer that has price of two thousand to company B, and company B didn't have money, so it's owe money to company A, right? So for company A, this two thousand is their account payable. Okay, account payable. For company B, this 2000 is the account payable. For company A, this 2000 is the account receivable. So, what is account receivable? Uh, what is account payable? Account payable is the amount of money that you promised to pay to somebody. And you haven't paid yet, okay? 
Again, account payable is the amount that you owe to somebody and you haven't paid yet. Now next we have is the note payable. Uh, what is the difference between account payable and note payable? So for example, note payable, company A goes to the bank and borrow $100,000 and um, it say that it's going to pay in five years. The interest is 10% per year, okay? 10% per year. And company A sign a note with the bank, all right? Company A sign a note with the bank. So in this case, company A owe 100,000 to the bank. So this will be the note payable, note payable. 100,000, okay? Now the difference between note payable and account payable is that for note payable, we have to pay with interest. But account payable, we just owe the supplier in a short time and we don't have to pay interest on that. Okay, now ne next we're going to look at owner's equity. Owner equity is the amount that the owner invests in the company. It's going to influence by four things. The additional investment, drawing, revenue, and expenses. Now, when the owner invests more and more money to the company, it's going to increase the owner equity. If the owner withdraws some money from the company, it's going to decrease the owner equity. If the company earns some revenues when they sell something, then it's going to increase the owner equity. If the company have to pay the expenses, then it's going to decrease the owner equity. Okay? So these are the four things that is in is influenced to the owner equity. All right, let's continue with the class tomorrow.